Hey, it's Brooks here in The Forge. The title of this video might seem a little bit bizarre and clickbaity, but it's actually kind of a funny story. Flashback to a few months ago, I'm scrolling through and being served lovely targeted ads on Instagram when I come across something that's advertising itself as a mini keyboard for Procreate. Now I'd call myself something of a Procreate power user. All of the art on the wall back there was made in Procreate. A ton of videos on this channel about Procreate. Anything that's 2D art of mine was made in Procreate. I went ahead and purchased this keyboard mostly out of my own curiosity and for the benefit of the folks watching this channel. I approached it a little bit like a risk, right? The website that it was available on was a little bit dubious. It looked like something that was uh, just made yesterday as a little bit of a shell to funnel you through the purchase process. Now, I don't think much of it. Most international items aren't exactly arriving with prime two-day shipping. So a little bit of time goes by and the official Twitter account for Procreate tweets out, hey, just to let you know, there's no such thing as a Procreate keyboard. If you see ads for this, it's a scam. Please don't buy it and try to get your money back. That's sort of where my intuition was leaning already with this product. It seemed a little bit too good to be true or just a little bit odd. I went back to the website that I bought it from to find that the website was gone. Now, no sooner have I opened up a dispute, a claim to get my money back that Procreate has an update and says, hey, we've been contacted by the folks who make the keyboard and it is indeed real. Now, the thing that most Procreate users are probably wondering past the point of whether or not this thing is real is, is it worth it? Is it necessary? After all, unlike a desktop app where having one hand on the keyboard for keyboard shortcuts is really helpful and Procreate has had keyboard shortcuts built in if you want to connect a keyboard by Bluetooth if you want. Procreate really has all of their tools accessible either from the quick menu, uh, from one or two taps away. It's incredibly ergonomic, the interface, and so a keyboard doesn't seem like something that you'd really need. Plus the all-in-one portability of Procreate all just being in the iPad with the pencil might make you wonder, is it worth carrying around an extra accessory if I'm mobile? So let's hook this up, make sure it works, but also more importantly, figure out if this is a worthwhile addition to any kind of Procreate workflow. All right, so we're connected here, and let me just keep these as sort of a cheat sheet. The first thing that I'm noticing, which is kind of nice, is that a lot of the options here aren't necessarily for the things that are, you know, readily available. This brush size being, you know, something of, a, of an exception, right? I don't know that this is necessarily a more optimal use than, than simply just kind of using it like that. Maybe if you're trying to get a little bit more precise. But some of these, like the hue saturation brightness is normally under this adjustments menu. So that, that's one tap, two, then three, if you're trying to get to the layer itself. Let's get to this overlay layer, open up hue saturation brightness. That's kind of nice, right? Also available here's this, this full screen button, which pulls away the tools, which is something that you can do in gesture controls. And that's kind of the thing that, that makes me trepidatious over this keyboard in general is that a lot of these things are, you know, customizable and things that you can just put into the quick menu, which I, there's a quick menu button here, right? Which, which brings it up in the middle of the screen. The thing with that is though, as I'm using the quick menu, I don't even tap and then tap the next thing. I just, I just swipe in the direction of the quick menu and, and now I've access to the thing that I want to. So it's it's not easier to just to do this. There's buttons to swap between the eraser and pencil tool, which is kind of nice because the, the fastest quote unquote way to do that is with the second generation iPad pencil by double tapping the button that's here, but it's just not something that I, I end up doing on purpose too often. There's a button here to open the color tab, which is basically the same as tapping it. I, I suppose if you're here, and you pop it up. Let's see if it if it works when it's uh, a small menu like this. Yeah, there it just kind of keeps it up. So it's only opening and closing the, the upper right hand menu. This X button here is swapping the color. So your previous color, that blue and black back and forth. This is something that's already available if you press and hold on the color palette. It swaps the color back and forth. This V key is opening up the transform tool, which is nice. Uh, it's the same as you would be tapping there. That's kind of the thing with a lot of these. It's a somewhat lateral move. If you're more familiar with um, using you know, a keyboard and that's what you, you need to be doing, it's gonna be more of a comfort for you. Here's a layer panel button, which is you know 
I think all that you're really doing here is swapping out the motion of, of com which might seem almost melodramatic to say that that's a, a problem, right? But sometimes when you're working here and coming all the way over here, maybe if you had a second hand that's doing this, right? You can sort of move back and forth between, you know, here's my brush and here's my eraser back and forth. What is nice is that double tapping it does seem, or, or tapping, you know, the brush when you're already on the brush or the eraser when you're already on the eraser brings up the menu. So that's kind of nice if you're trying to swap back and forth. Six here is the selection tool, so that's nice. Five brings up the options and actions. Seven here is bringing up the color balance. We also have this eyedropper tool here, which doesn't do anything when my pencil is touching the iPad, but this brings up like another level to this, right? My personal uh, setup, what I've customized here, is not for this to be the eyedropper tool. Rather, uh, this is the same as this, this middle button. Um, between the, the brush sliders here. And what that's gonna do when I pull it up is actually bring up the layers that I might be on. So if I'm you know trying to find just uh, the glow here, I'll, I'll get to layer 32 and that's how I can jump to that layer. That's something that I have set up. So that means that you know depending on what you wanna do here, you can actually go in and customize. Granted, it won't reflect the icons that are on this keyboard, but you could customize via their keyboard customization or their gesture menus to specify you know, one specific thing that you like to do. This might end up being something that's helpful with very specific workflows. Maybe you're in sort of a production mode where you're generating a lot of work that's very similar all the time. Maybe you're doing animation or uh, storyboarding or things like that and you're quickly jumping back and forth between things. We have the undo and redo keys here, which is the same as a double or triple tap on the, the, the screen, we're getting down to the milliseconds here of how this is useful. It's it's the difference between, you know, these keyboard uh, inputs and just moving your hand and pulling your, your pencil away from the screen. Maybe that's enough to make this worth it for you. We have a command key here, which acts as a modifier for some of these keys, but actually if I press and hold it, it brings up an index of keyboard shortcuts, which is only somewhat helpful because our keys here don't say B, C, E, L, S, and V, although you can sort of figure out which are which. That's something helpful to reiterate here too. If you don't want to buy a specific keyboard and you already have a Bluetooth keyboard, you can already get keyboard shortcuts. I think the main draw to this is that having a, here, let me grab. Here's admittedly one of the larger Apple keyboards, but obviously this is way more real estate than this if you're traveling and even having it off to the side here and trying to find those specific keys is gonna be less convenient than something like this. Let's try out those, those uh, copy paste functions. We've got cut and paste. We've got copy paste. This is actually pretty efficient. I, I think mainly because we're mostly used to keyboard shortcuts for copy and paste. And I think that the, you know, this is the gesture menu for Procreate. It ends up being a, maybe a little on the unwieldy side to do the three finger swipe um, and then cut and paste. A lot of tapping that you have to do to get back out of a layer or a selection. Here, it's really just letting you paste over and over again, which is kind of nice. Usually you'd have to leave that transform tool in order to get, we have so many now, oh my goodness, to get the next copy going. My final verdict on this keyboard might be a little bit premature. It's something more of a first impression, and I think that's sort of the key with this, is that it would take getting used to the muscle memory of these things, and the question that that brings up is, should you? Like, is that necessary when there's already so much muscle memory that you can be, that's built into the existing app and the existing interface? The developers of Procreate have put so much time and effort into making it so that all of these things are relatively easy to access, even if it is something that takes about three taps to get to like the hue, saturation, brightness menu. I understand that because this is structured like a numpad, the, the size and format of it, they've numbered the keys, one, two, three through nine, right? But it would have been nice for beyond just these three XCV keys for them to actually have the corresponding uh, letter or actual keyboard input on on the key uh, because that's what the iPad is reading, right? Um, if we bring this up again, these uh, these brush size icons here are really just bracket keys. So it would have been nice 
to have brackets on there as well so that you can use this possibly in other apps that aren't just Procreate. Like I've said about accessories ad nauseum before, even with something like the Sketchboard Pro, which I use a ton and all the time, buying something is not going to make your art better. It's simply just a way of making things easier. But unfortunately, in this case, the, the ease is so marginally different that it really just comes down to a comfort or personal preference basis. This is not going to do anything extra that isn't already available here, barring one or two small things. I'm glad that this exists for that small group of people who are coming over from desktop apps who merely have a personal preference for keyboard shortcuts. But I will say for new Procreate users or people who might see this and get excited, they're all things that can already be done in Procreate. My advice would be instead of grabbing this keyboard is actually learn the tools that are in Procreate, learn the shortcuts and the customization that you can do to bring your favorite tools right to your fingertips with something like the quick menu, which I've shown in a video before that I'll link below. I have tons of Procreate videos in a playlist below. I have tons of videos in general here on Character Design Forge where we're making new videos every week. You can get my course Learn Character Design at learncharacterdesign.com and I offer something called Biko's Backpack over on Patreon, which is a new delivery of a collectible trading card and hard enamel pin in your mailbox every month. I'm at Bagel Denizen on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Twitch. Thank you so much for watching and have fun creating. <laughs>